to look into making a C65 list or mega 65 <laughs> list at some point, <laughs> but we can talk about this later. Yeah. So okay. uh, we, we're gonna rush very quickly through the history of our project, which is called mega 65. And today, uh, Martin, uh, who is our um, social media expert, and he's also um, CFO of our little uh, company we had to found because we are moving uh, bigger funds today is we have to because uh, the project got really big and uh, we are uh, doing this for almost six years now and uh, myself I'm leading the the um, yeah I'm doing the management for the whole project uh, since uh, 2015 and um, not so much coding unfortunately so um, Martin, if you can just um, put on those uh, uh, slides we produced, we're gonna rush very quickly through it. So this is a Mega 65 to be exact. This is the pre-series, which is not the current state, but uh, uh, it's the best uh, photo we got of it currently. Oh, next, please. And um, so the quick history, you probably know it all, the, the famous 18-bit machines. Um, in 1991, there was this Commodore 65 prototype, um, not released, but uh, sold off and, and the project was stopped uh, because Commodore bought the Amiga and they said uh, everything is gonna be 16 bit and they don't want to uh, sabotage the release of the Amiga. So the project uh, Commodore 65 was stopped and the prototypes were sold off, which is uh, nice to see it's uh, about 30 years now. Oh, exactly 30 years. Next, please. And uh, yeah, this was the first iterations when we started. Um, we uh, worked with the ne uh, Nexus 4 DDR boards, which is now um, the, the, um, the actual, the current version is called A7 and you can, uh, can get those for around 100 euros, I think. And they are still capable to run uh, the Mega 65 core and we are still producing streams for those and uh, this was the first own board we made and it has some flaws for example you see the sd card wa uh, slot was forgotten we put that on afterwards we showed this i think in 2006 at break uh, 16 at uh, a revision in uh, sub britain and some stuff on it but only for those interested in private and the next board is the, um, yeah, oh, okay. We made uh, for the Amiga 30, we made this uh, laser centric first prototype. It has the Nexus board inside and an additional small PCB. And um, quickly afterwards, uh, afterwards, uh, not, not so quickly, I think in 2017, we had the pre-series and this is the R2 board. This was inside the case you saw at the beginning. It also already has its own board design with everything on it. And it's not very far from what we got today. And uh, this is the latest board, the R3. It's inside the dev kits we released. We sold 100 dev kits last year. Um, fortunately, mainly to developers who are currently doing software on it, which I will show later. And this is the dev kit. Um, since our injection molds were not ready, we uh, had a, a cooperation with Plexi Laser, who does those nice Plexi uh, or acrylic glass cases for the Amiga and the C64. And he uh, made this uh, especially for the Mega 65 dev kit. So uh, there are only 100 of those out in the wild and it's, yeah, it's a rare collector's item, but fortunately used by people actually developing on it. Uh, this is Anton who is also lurking here. And uh, this is the video we made, you know, how to assemble the dev kit. And uh, I think it's very nice shot. So <laughs> we put it in here. Uh, the, the keyboard, which is uh, kind of famous, maybe you can skip to Shallon praising it. So, yeah, this is the backside. Uh, actually, the keyboard is very expensive, but uh, we didn't want to make any compromises on that. That's this here, Shallon. I just I keep feeling the keys depress, and they, it feels so good. <laughs> I, I mean. The company that that made these is really good. I would I would trust them to make a keyboard any day. Okay, yeah, so uh, this was feels... one of our biggest concerns. Thanks, Martin. It just feels so, so nice. Um, 
Yes, and it's very expensive and it's a Cherry MX, uh, MX based and it has a metal uh, uh, plate underneath and uh, we put some specials on it. All the LEDs are double RGB LEDs, freely programmable, programmable. In fact, it's also an FPGA inside this keyboard. So no arm, no proper, uh, no closed source things inside the keyboard. And uh, there are more goodies, the lock keys, they are extra clicky and stuff like that. Um, yeah, please let's go on. And uh, about the injection molds, which are finished today. This was auch, uh, also quite a, a process with Hinsteiner in Austria. Uh, we did a few iterations and um, um, yes, now let me switch it. My arm is falling off. Okay, this worked. Um, we uh, now have the final injection molds and I will later show you on this uh, wacky live cam the, the case, uh, what it's today. And it's really, really good. It's industrial quality. Um, yes, we work towards this with the community. Um, this is the 3D model. You can see what we've done in the back. Uh, if you wonder why these ports are not uh, used, um, actually there's no PCB at these uh, places. You can these are, we call these breakout ports. You can do extra ports like user ports if you want. Um, someone will probably develop small PCBs for it, but they are not in by default. Uh, this way also wishes by the community. Quick look at the manual. It's uh, available. We build it like weekly uh, as a PDF. It has almost 1000 pages already. We're going to split this in different books because there's everything inside how the mega works uh, about basic 10, how you program the FPGAs. We have three FPGAs uh, total, one in the keyboard, two on the machine for several reasons. Uh, it's quite a complicated machine, but it just can do so much uh, that we are happy with what we got. Right? Okay, so um, this is uh, the emulator. LGB does the emulator, XMU, and it does um, C65 original emulation, but also Mega 65. And it's uh, really good. And people are developing uh, software on it, which actually also runs on the hardware. So um, very helpful. Um, just a quick view. I mean, this is the Commodore users meeting and uh, we still there to show some spectrum because uh, yeah, there are other cores of course uh, developed for the Mega 65. And uh, um, since you have a real case, you have a, a real floppy drive, you have a real keyboard, it absolutely makes sense to us to port other computers like Amiga, Atari ST, etc. And uh, this is the, the, the Spectrum uh, core, which uh, the Cedix Uno uh, is based on the Cedix Uno, which is very capable and uh, very much fun if you dare to look at something as <laughs> yeah, the, the most common question for a few years. Um, we decided not to let uh, the community rush ourselves because we really, we are nerds. We don't want to earn any money from it. Uh, Mega is a, a nonprofit organization and we are not, uh, we don't want to get any money out of it. We just want to make the best, most nerdish product for ourselves and everybody who, who wants to join. And I think so far we succeeded in it. So we did not do any Kickstarter, et cetera. We, we did some fundraising, but uh, very differently for the molds. And uh, we will see the, the, the names are inside the case, et cetera. So it's, it's in very close uh, connection to the community. It's, getting built slowly. And we are now at, let's say, 90, 95%. So at this point, um, maybe I can, because we were asked to uh, actually show what's um, the current status. So I'm trying to, yes, switch the camera and uh, do some live action and show you the machine. Of course, it's very nice. The keyboard is uh, not the latest. I don't have the latest myself. It, uh, they all went to the developers. It's the, uh, the printed version. The, the current one has a double shot injection uh, keys. So, so uh, you never gonna rub off uh, the, the chars, etc. So let me just open that. If it's too quick, I am too quick. It's too wacky or anything, just let me know. So um, you are a bit is, focusing uh, on the left part, actually. Uh, if you can. Yes. Okay. It's, yes. It's, thank it's, you. It will be more right. complicated thank to you. show you something on screen, hold the camera, etc. But 
Okay, I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, the names of the guys that it's probably not enough light, but as you can see, machine is running. Here's the FPGA programming adapter, which is no longer needed because the machine can flash itself. Um, but yeah, since I'm testing always the latest bit streams, it's quicker for me to do. So let me reset this. Um, you see it resets very quickly. We can set it in a mode where it's just like a real Commodore. It takes like one second with black screen, but this was uh, the debug boot. So uh, we added, uh, you see these nice raster line effects now, which also can be switched off or uh, CET emulation. Um, you can also see um, the new text on the uh, basic because um, we, what we tried to is uh, we wanted to continue where uh, Commodore left off the machine. And uh, this was not only uh, the, the PCB and some uh, um, problems still existing with the chips, but it was also the basic, the basic 10 was not finished. And um, we uh, started finishing it and uh, removed all the bugs and added the missing functions. And so now uh, we added our name or mega, let me switch again, sorry for that, um, to the, to the uh, copyright screen. It's nice to be besides Commodore and Microsoft. And it's also very nice to see the span from 2021 to 1977. It's quite some time spent. So um, yeah, let me show you something. I am gonna show you um, stuff from Shallon 50 k Maybe you know his Twitch channel. He's uh, constantly doing uh, programming for C64, now Mega 65 and for Game Boy. And um, I urged him to release what he did here, a small tech demo because uh, due to copyright reasons, we could not, uh, um, we will not release it as a full game, but just to see the capabilities. Um, I'm probably not be, not able to hold the camera and play properly, but this is a tech demo. We just made a turrican in a few days. And uh, yeah, as you can see, it's for an 8-bit machine. It's very, very capable. And um, to tell the truth, he's not happy with the engine anymore. He said yeah, the parallax uh, lux doesn't work and stuff like that. He did a much better one. So I said, please release it as a tech demo so people can see it. Um, Okay, but now back to basic 10. Uh, I'm going to show you some more things. Shalin did a, a basic competition. And just as so you see, okay, um, maybe I have to add, the machine is running at 40 mega, megahertz. So uh, you can switch to 3.5, uh, make it like the original C65. And it's very much compatible to the C65. It's also getting more and more compatible to the C64. I can also show you if we have to turn something on that. But um, now it just, uh, I want to show you what's happening in basic. So Shalin did this basic competition. And you see someone, uh, for example, coded uh, Tetris in pure basic with some reflections here. I'm going to try to get rid of those. And it even has music. And now I will try to play and while holding the camera just so you see oh I want no i want to continue so this is pure basic and um, i think it's easy to notice the speed you can now really make nice games in basic and they feel like real games it's not something slow or wacky like it was before and um, yeah this is a nice example i really like to Play this a lot, and uh, again, it's it, it's pure basic, which I will show you in a second. Let me just put that tile there. So, <laughs> okay. And if I, if I hit run stop, you see here um, that it's pure basic. So I don't have two hands to hit run stop restore. We're gonna live with this. And uh, what I want also want to show you that the basic now got um, syntax highlighting, which BitShifter added among a lot of other features. And we're trying to do this, of course, very much in the style of Commodore and not to sacrifice the style of programming and the feel. Um, but we also want to give you the same amazement uh, as you had it in 1983, 1984, when you discovered your first C64. So 
in fact, we have to do a, a lot of things much better because if you nowadays, if you type on your C64, it does not feel as great as it did when you were a child. But so we have to, we, uh, to do the best possible keyboard to give you the same feeling you had when you were young. And uh, we're trying to do this with all the stuff, with the machine itself, with the basic, with everything. And uh, yeah, it seems we are succeeding with it because um, people are more and more coding software for it and they're enjoying it. And of course, everybody's waiting for the first iteration of uh, real computers, not the dev kits, which is, and this is maybe an exclusive to say here today, um, we're working really hard on releasing it, uh, the first bunch, which is planned to be 400 machines in this year. We will at least give you uh, the, the possibility to pre-order and to put your name on the list that definitely will get the machine. Within this year, with a little luck, it will be under the Christmas tree for 400 people uh, this year. So I think this was quite a rush, but um, now I'm open to questions, which uh, I haven't looked at the chat, but it seems to be quite full. So <laughs> maybe if you want to moderate the questions, that would be helpful. Yes, there are some actually, uh, let me see from the start. There's a comment or question from Antonio actually, though he has been, he has the, had the chance to play with the Mega 65. Uh, he says, one thing I'm missing though is support for safe illegal opcodes. Is that coming at some point? Okay, so the spirit of the C65 was that all the illegal or let's say unused opcodes were filled with uh, um, new opcodes that uh, really were helpful. and. Of course, we are always yeah on we're not sure at what point we want to do uh, support the illegal opcodes because this pretty much sacrifices the or original idea of the C65. But um, with the development of uh, FPGAs or VHDL cores, it is we are getting very close to having uh, C64 uh, ported from Mister, for example. So at this point. We can, of course, say um, if you really want to do so, you can just run the C64 code uh, a core. Uh, we could, of course, also switch to the C64 core without you knowing it or when you make the go64 command. But um, honestly, I wouldn't do that because if you want to use your Mega 65 just to play C64 things, you can do this with a C64 core, I think, and uh, somebody will uh, make that and convert it. And we are already helping in uh, getting an environment where you can just uh, drop the uh, Mr. Cores uh, into and you, you get the, the Mega 65 uh, um, bit stream out of it. Um, for our main core, I think it's not the right way to, to uh, support the illegal opcodes because this would mean in C64 mode, um, which is it's, it's a seamless, you have three levels, it's C64, C65 and Mega 65, but you can do anything in from every level. So you can do from C64, you can switch to uh, 40 megahertz. And um, this is where you actually start. You take your C64 code. I took my raster code, which was like 30 years old, and I just put it, uh, I ran it in, in uh, um, the C64 mode. Then I switched to, to 40 megahertz, and I had just so much more time to do with the same code, just a lot of things more. And it's very natural that you will start using the new opcodes all the all the uh, the uh, the area is filled with um, new uh, clever opcodes, the from the forty five ten CPU, and you want to use those. And um, so I think in the mega core you will won't uh, ever have uh, illegal opcodes. If you uh, have stuff like um, old crunches that actually rely on that, you will switch to a C sixty four core. Otherwise. Um, I think the, the new opcodes you get with the 45, uh, 
10 CPU are much better than the illegal opcodes we had on the C64. I hope this was not too complicated and answers. <laughs> I guess it answers question. the question indeed. Just looking at the time, I see that Martin is also in the background uh, answering some questions directly in the chat. Maybe we can take this, Perfect. these quickly, these two. Uh, first, from Fabrizio, uh, which development kits supports the Mega 65, C65? Any support in CC65 in the future? Um, the, this is, I didn't quite get it. I mean, CC65, the, the C compiler, actually supports the Mega 65. This is one question. We have another um, C compiler um which is about to be released from volker bartelmann is vbcc it's very uh, much optimized a bit shifter who's working on the rom actually wants to do um a real-time c interpreter and uh, this this is for the, the the c compiler stuff and regarding platform um hardware platforms that actually can run it are the nexus board which you can uh, by or freely by the A7 board, and of course our own main boards. And um, yeah, these are the platforms you can run on. There's one guy on Discord. I also, if you're more interested more, um, please head to mega65.org, and in the top menu there are all the links to the GitHub and to the manual and to Discord. And there's a lot happening on Discord. There's one guy who uh, has. I, I, I don't, didn't quite get it, to be honest. A small um, FPGA board with an Artix uh, 7 on it. And uh, uh, he, uh, excuse me, 100T. It's the 100T or 200T, which is on the R3 uh, board. And he's doing his own board, which can run Mega 65. But I'm not, uh, I don't know any details about that. Mm -hmm. So. I'm not so sure the C65 uh, fully support the Me the Mega 65 at the moment. I think the assembler is supported. C code, I'm not so sure it supports everything. Uh, I think right. Yeah. You're right. Yes. I yeah. see again some. Uh, maybe we can indeed continue on the also on the on the chat box. Huh? Maybe the, the last one because uh, even you you mentioned that uh, that it will be available. Uh, hopefully by end of year, etc. I see a question related that many people are asking, I guess, uh, when will you start taking orders? With that one, I will stop the recording and preparing yes. for the next, please. We are, we're hoping to uh, start the pre-orders uh, in summer 